just completed the Liberty Falls Easter egg for the main story mission in Black Ops 6 Zombies, and it was great. So here is a complete guide from start to finish with every step that you need to complete it, either solo or as a squad. It's going to go quick, and I'm going to give as few spoilers as possible. Let's get it. First, kill a few zombies, get enough points, and follow the guide to get to the Pack-A-Punch machine. This is fully guided. I don't need to show you how to do that. This will freeze all of the zombies outside and start your Easter egg journey by introducing you to a very ghost-like character named Panos. Once that is finished, you are now ready to collect the three items in order to get the Liberty Falls Wonder Weapon, known as the Jet Gun. Well, also known as the Thrustodyne, or the Thrustodyne M23 is the technical name, but we'll call it the Thrustodyne. The first item you need to assemble the Wonder Weapon is the Water Pressure Gauge. But in order to get that, you have to go to the flower shop. Outside the flower shop, you'll notice a watering spigot. Go up to that, interact with it, and you will take off the valve. Take that water valve back to the Liberty Lanes bowling alley. On the right side of the bowling alley where the lanes are, you're gonna notice a panel. Walk up to that panel, and when you look close, you'll see a water pressure gauge. In fact, it's the same gauge that you've seen on the Thrustodyne Wonder Weapon. I call it the Frog Eyes. Melee that panel and then hold to interact. When you do this, infinite zombies will begin to spawn and a bar on the left will pop up to build the water pressure. You have to sit there and hold the interact button until that gauge is full. Now, if you're working with a team, this is really easy. Have your team distract the zombies and train them and shoot the occasional zombies that stray off and try to hurt you. You'll get it done in no time. If you're solo, this is a pain and it takes a while because you have to train the zombies to one end of the bowling alley, run back, hold it for about two or three seconds, go do it again. You can go outside a little bit to get a couple more seconds, but if you go too far outside, it will just stop and you have to start all over. So just do a little bit at a time if you're solo. Be persistent, you'll get it. When the meter is filled up, out pops the water pressure gauge. One of three items collected. The second item is the handbrake, but in order to get the handbrake, you first need the tool shed key. But in order to get the tool shed key, you have to find a very unique looking zombie called the groundskeeper. Head over to the cemetery and begin to slay zombies there. In fact, if you're in a squad, I would always leave one person in the cemetery fighting zombies by themselves because the groundskeeper spawns completely randomly. When he does pop up, you'll notice him because he looks very different from the other zombies. Take him out and you'll see a gold item named the tool shed key. Take that tool shed key down from the cemetery to the left. You're going to find a wooden shed. Use that to open the door. Look over and there it is, the handbrake. Two of three items collected. The final item is the electrical wire. To get the electrical wire, you first need a Mangler Cannon kill streak, and there's two ways that you can get this. Just go to a crafting bench, spend 1,250 salvage, and craft a Mangler Cannon. It works every time, but that salvage that you could use to upgrade the rarity of your weapon, which you will definitely want later on in the boss fight. The second option is to wait till round 10 or 11 when the first Mangler spawns and kill the mangler by only shooting his cannon. Not his head, not his body. Shoot his cannon, and it will drop a mangler cannon kill streak and save you 1,250 salvage. Buy or pick up that kill streak, head to the northeast side of the map to the Radio House Electronics Store, and you're gonna find a metal gate that prevents you from getting into this oh-so-fancy electronics store. Pull out your mangler cannon, charge it up, shoot it, and boom, gate drops, you walk in, Look on the ground, you're gonna find this gray pile of cables, looks like nothing. Keep interacting until you find it. Out will pop the gold electrical cable. Keep in mind, these spawns do vary, so you might have found it in the back one time, but it's in the front the next time, but it's a small sword. Now, that's three of three items collected for the Wonder Weapon. It's time to get what is yours. Go back to the spawn to the hotel, specifically upstairs to room 202, where you will find a surprise. And look at that, a prototype of the Thrustodyne M23. Go up to the table, hold interact, and you will assemble the Wonder Weapon. You now have your first Black Ops 6 Zombies Easter Egg Wonder Weapon that you've ever built. 
Congratulations. And let me tell you, this gun is an A plus on the fun meter. I really, really enjoyed using it. Now that you've completed your fancy new toy in the Thrustodyne, you get to use its special abilities to collect the next three parts needed to build the LTG. The first part is in the comic book store. Go right in the center of the desk and look up. And what is that? Oh, look, there's a part up there. What can I do? Hmm, maybe I'll use the suck feature from the Thrustodyne. Use your primary fire and pull it down to you. One of three items collected. The second item for the LTG is in the building across from the Alamo, the giant building in the center. Use the zip lines to get to the roof and you're gonna notice this building and this white bus. Now, technically the item that you need is below you. So what you're gonna do is get off the building, walk around, go up to the top of the other side. Don't use the zip line back to the Alamo. Instead, big parkour jump off the top, land on the white bus. While on top of the bus, shift to the left and look in the building to the right window. And there is your second part for the LTG. So use that wonder weapon and suck it right up. That's two items. The final item is back in the church and it's very easy to find if you're looking where Panos is. Look slightly to the left and up. There is a floating item that's very obvious that you need it. Suck that one up. You now have three of three to build the LTG. From the church, head back to the graveyard, take the zip line way across the map, back to the top of the Alamo. When you get to the Alamo, go to the back left and you will find a workbench where you can now assemble the three parts to make the LTG. Assemble it. You've done a lot of building and collecting. Now is when the real fun of this Easter egg begins. Head to any of the ether storm lightning clouds that are on the map. There's one at the church and one at the chicken shack. I went to the one at the chicken shack, but you can do it in the opposite order. It doesn't matter. Walk to the center of that storm, interact, and it will place the LTG down. This will open up a portal and for 60 seconds, you have to protect it. Now, when I say you have to protect it, this isn't just zombies that come and kind of like smack it here and there. They just come in a full sprint and run right into the portal. Every time they run into the portal, that bar goes down. If the bar goes all the way down, you fail. Don't worry, you can do it again. You just have to advance another round and then come back and attempt it again but keep the zombies away for 60 seconds. The portal will be complete and it will summon in a named high value target. These have so much health, but they're not difficult if you're a decent zombies player. What I recommend doing if you're in a squad and really do this the whole time, have one person in your squad that's always working on the opposite side of the map from all the objectives and just have them train zombies the whole time. My buddy Evil Gaming did this for me and it made it so easy to run all of these steps because we weren't advancing into high rounds. We were able to focus on the objective. So if you're not solo, definitely use that method. Attack this high value target until its health is low enough that it starts emitting this purple gas from its body. That's how you know it's ready. You're then going to run all the way back to the church, to the machine, interact with the machine where you will get an ether canister. When you carry the ether canister, you cannot sprint. You can only walk. So I always recommend doing this towards the end of a round. We're not having to fight off hundred zombies at the same time. Go back to the high value target and lure that high value target to the closest dark ether field generator, the trap. Set the canister down in the middle of where the trap activates, lure the high value target into that same area, activate it, and then kill the high value target while it's in that activated trap area with the canister. When you kill it, you'll see this animation and you will harness the unlimited power of the high value target. Well, actually just harnessing the dark ether power of the high value target. This will make the canister unstable and you will have 90 seconds to take that canister and walk it all the way back to the church to then interact and put it back in the machine. It's really not that hard to do, especially if you're at the end of a round or a friend is training zombies for you. Just walk straight. You'll make it. There's plenty of time. When you place that charged up ether canister into the machine, look to your left and you're going to notice that a new tactical item has appeared and that is the Strauss counter. Pick that up and you are ready for the next stage of this Easter egg. You'll need to use the Strauss counter to find three different projectors on the map, although they're always in the same place, so it makes it much easier but the Strauss counter will determine what color you turn each of those three projectors. Pause there for a second because the Strauss counter color system is not what you think at first. It has red, yellow, and green like an American stoplight. When you get next to a projector, if the Strauss counter is red, you will turn the projector the opposite color to green. 
If the Strauss counter is green when you get to a projector, you will turn it to the opposite color of red. Red Strauss, green projector. Green Strauss, red projector. If it's yellow, let it mellow. Keep it the same. It feels like a Dr. Seuss book. Make sure that you understand this, otherwise you have to go and tweak it a bunch like I did on my first run through. The first projector is between Liberty Lanes and the church. It's next to the PhD flopper machine right on that little elevated piece of grass. Use a Strauss counter to get the projector to the correct color as I just mentioned. The second projector is near the tool shed where you got the handbrake. It's just down the way on a little piece of grass. Use the Strauss counter, get it to the right color. The last one's a little trickier. It's on top of the Alamo. Use the Strauss counter, get it to the correct color. If you've gotten all three to the right colors, they're going to turn and face towards spawn. And you're gonna see this beautiful three beams shooting all the way back to your spawn. It's actually really cool looking. And my buddy who was across the map could look over and see the same thing that I was seeing even though I was way closer. As people often do, make sure to follow the light back to the spawn. And you're gonna notice that that random machine that's right next to the gas station that now has a second ether canister in it. Well, now you're gonna use that ether canister to go to the other ether storm that you didn't yet collect. For me, I did the chicken shack first, so now I gotta go to the cemetery. But before you do that, make sure to go back to the original ether cloud that you already captured the HVT from. Grab the LTG from the center of it, because you'll need that for the second one. Go to the ether cloud, set down the LTG, start the portal, defend it for 60 seconds, an HVT will appear. Grab the ether canister, bring it to a dark ether field generator trap, set it on the trap, lure the HVT target over, attack the HVT and get them low enough that they're emitting purple gas from all sorts of places, lure them to the trap, kill the HVT in the trap with the canister, watch it get sucked in with all of its unlimited power, and you are now almost done. You have 90 seconds to walk that second and final canister back to the church to put it into the machine. Again, it's plenty of time, don't fret. Once you put it in the machine, you are now ready to fight the final boss for the Liberty Falls Easter egg. You don't have to go right away. I, I recommend getting your perks, getting your pack-a-punch, get a self-revive, get a mutant injection because this battle will be in tight spaces. Like and comment your favorite part about this Easter egg if this video helped you because that helps me. And from me, One Average Dan, remember to always enjoy gaming. Bye!